We know about conservative blacklisting in the comic book industry, but apparently uh, Mark Wade and Larry Hama believe they got blacklisted from Dan DiDio in their insane rants whilst they has been going uh, on this uh, thread, which is literally uh, talking about blacklisting Dan DiDio from the industry. Uh, these guys are so petty. Uh, the comic industry really is just like this high school hellhole, and you've got your little cliques. And they fight each other uh, like little gangs. And then they try to ruin everybody else's careers because they're so scared of, I guess, losing their careers. It's really sad to watch. And, of course, it's really sad to watch people like Larry Hama and Mark Wade, former greats uh, who are just fading in their relevancy, uh, clinging on to this stuff by trying to attack people constantly for clout. It's so sad. But let's get into the news. My name is John Delarose. I'm a number one best-selling author and award-winning comic creator. I'm doing something different, creating a subscribe star here. Now, this is a monthly subscription deal, and I am putting out as much content as I possibly can for you. So uh, we just put out extra sensory, uh, the first couple pages of this, which is what the art pays for right now. And of course, as we do more, our goal is to make monthly comic books in addition to, of course, everything else I'm coming out with. <laughs> there's there's a lot. If you guys have followed along, it's difficult for me to sell because I'm not the guy who has like the one property. I'm like the pulp writer. So I've got I've got 18 novels, 12 different graphic novels, something new ideas coming out all the time. Um, it's just about uh, awesome content all the time, just like these companies do. Like Marvel and DC put out, you know, 80 books a month or whatnot. Uh, I want to try to compete with them for real. And so I do this by not just doing one property. I do this by doing a lot of content. And so my fans are always very happy, and I hope you'll become one of them. So this is it. Um, I We are trying to grow this right now, uh, and I hope you'll check it out. The link's in the description below. My Amazon link is also there for all the books that are already out. And also, uh, of course, I've got my own web store if you want to get signed books from me directly. I appreciate everybody who reads. That's what we're trying to accomplish here, getting the reading going again, as the comic industry really isn't doing that for the most part. Oh my gosh. But here it is. Larry Hama and Mark Wade, they went on to Jamal Eigel's uh, post trying to cancel me. And John Trent, I was going to write this article. Dang it. <laughs> he is the fastest uh, draw in the West on this stuff. I, I always say, even though he's East Coast. He comes out with these articles so fast, like it's like, oh gosh. I, I always message him like, I'd like to write this. He's like, I already put up an hour ago. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, here it is. Uh, and they accused Dan DiDio of blacklisting them from D uh, DC Comics. And Wade just went absolutely ballistic. Now, now Wade is known for going ballistic on Facebook. One of the early tirades he had is that your boy Zach was going to Baltimore Comic Con. And he he told people, like, if you spot him, bring him to me. Like, like he's the king of the Comic Con. Uh, and he has to cast judgment upon your boy Zach, uh, if you guys remember that. That was one of the early times that uh, Zach got some attention. And, of course, he later got attention uh, by... Uh, of course, going to New York Comic Con and having a bunch of comic pros uh, try to harass him out of that Comic Con, which started Comics Gate. That was absolutely crazy at the time. So here it is, uh, and uh, they're still going off. Uh, <laughs> fast forward to 2019, Mark Wade deleted two full years of Facebook posts uh, in a tirade as he flipped out at the internet back then, and now he's flipping out once again. Wonder what's happening over DC Comics these days. So here's uh, some of the posts here. Here's my uh, beautiful interview with Dan DiDio, which spurred all this. The comic pros went nuts that this guy would just cock comics. By the way, there's nothing controversial about this. If you if you enjoy comic books, this is a great interview. I really I really hit it out of the park on this one, not going to lie. But here's what Jamal Eigel started. I just unfriended an ex-employee for crossing a line they can never come back from. Once you cross that comic skate line, we're done professionally and personally. That's This is for talking to me. Larry Hama then chimes in. He blacklisted me. That's Don, Dan DiDio, not me. I asked uh, Larry Hama to come on the show, and uh, Larry was actually very cordial uh, in talking in DM. He says he's done way too many interviews over the years. He's tired. He's sick of answering all the same questions, uh, but he thanks me for, uh, of course, uh, making the offer. Very, very nice. So despite uh, his kind of politics uh, aggrandizing in this thread, uh, he is a cordial, uh, decent person in private, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, at the same time, I was blacklisted at Marvel. I didn't work for like eight years. He asked me to take on a title I thought should be written by a woman, and I told him so. He did the same thing to Priest. So I'm confused at how this is blacklisting. If you, it, let's, let's parse this out, because I, as a blacklisted person, meaning I will never get offered any work at Marvel or DC or IDW or anywhere, uh, all because of this hat. I mean, I put this hat on. That was the end of that. Um... Dan DiDio seemed to have been offering him work, offering him a book. Maybe it was Wonder Woman. I don't know. Let's say it's Wonder Woman. 
Uh, and Larry Hama went into his office and said, no, that book needs to be written by a woman because a, a strong female lead should only be written by a woman. It, it's a typical identity politics stuff, which doesn't make any sense. If Larry Hama is a, a solid writer who can write female character, which he has, by the way, and I, I can vouch that he is, then why wouldn't he be good for the assignment? That doesn't make any sense. So he made a political rant out of an assignment, turned it down. What's going to happen with your boss at that point? If I walk in and, and I'm a Starbucks employee, and I and like uh, I'm asked to make a latte, right? Uh, and I go, no, I'm not making a latte because women's rights. Why aren't they making the latte? And what you know? It's and uh, I mean, how long am I going to work there if I'm refusing to make the latte? This isn't blacklisting. You refused to do work, Larry. <laughs> so he's like, okay, I'll hire somebody else who's just going to do the work and not not create a hassle for me. Pretty pretty simple on this level. But let's continue as it goes on. Uh, I was considered a commercial hack by organized comic fandom for my entire Marvel run of GI Joe. Uh, great run, by the way. Maybe it was. I don't know. I was considered not good enough to write for the GI Joe animated shows. I don't. I that doesn't really have to do with anything on Marvel's end. I mean, this is a TV show. Okay. My Wolverine run was mostly ignored by fanzines while it was running. I don't know about... I mean, again, this doesn't have to do with Marvel. Uh, I've read his Wolverine run. It's pretty decent. I enjoyed it. Uh, I was considered not good enough to teach comics at SVA. I was blacklisted by both Marvel and DC. The list goes on and on. I learned very early to ignore the negativity and Charlie Mike with my best efforts. Wow. He is the victim here, apparently. But he's still working at G.I. Joe and still working in comics. So, I, I mean, he can't be that much of a victim. But, oh, well. Uh, it continues on uh, as he as he talks about his blacklist. And uh, he, now he says uh, uh, his online fumetti should not be could not be shot for his alleged budget. And there wasn't enough bandwidth of the universe at the time to put up. There wasn't. This was a Hollywood deal. Again, this seems to have nothing to do with comics. Uh, I, the other head honcho was pissed. I turned down a job offer because I thought the project should have been written by a woman. Well, if he doesn't identify it by a woman, then he's not going to get the job offer. Here we are, still going. But Mark Wade continues, too. Mark Wade uh, talks here. And Devin Grayson and Alan Grant and me. Now, this is very interesting. I don't know about Mark Wade being blacklisted. He's been working everywhere for years. Devin Grayson, as I recall, uh, really wasn't selling and upset fans with her Nightwing story where she got Nightwing graped, if you remember that one. And uh, I actually like Devin as a person. I've talked with her again, uh, so I'm not I'm not saying anything. But that just from a business perspective, that was not uh, a well regarded run, uh, and of course that really tanked her uh, career going forward. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, unfortunately, that is just a business decision. I don't think it's a personal thing on this level. I don't know anything about Alan Grant, but I'd be interested in hearing that. And I don't see how Mark Wade was blacklisted. Here's Kwanzaa chiming in, my, my buddy. Uh, <laughs> the, the comics industry is better off with that petty person no longer in a position of power. They're talking about Dan DiDio. Uh, gosh, I mean, it's, it's a little whisper network here in a Facebook group. Now, by the way, uh, once this got put up by bounding into comics, uh, the uh, Jamal Igel, who originally wrote this post, privated his Facebook so nobody could see it. <laughs> so they can't even stand by their own words. When they run an attack, in an attack group on people, they're not even standing by their own words. They flip out that somebody would dare notice that they're just being petty assholes on a uh, on a high school level. And then they're like, why don't I get to work? It's crazy. <laughs> I'm retroactively angry now. And Mike Waringo, uh, but Mike Waringo, I don't remember him being blacklisted either. But of course, he can't speak for himself. Uh, so Mark Wade has to speak for him. The guy's dead. That's why. Maybe he's blacklisted because he's dead. That would make sense. He can't literally do work. Uh, keeps going. I know people who are blacklisted who asked him to his face about it, at which point he lied to them. Wait a minute. <laughs> at least once she actually came up to me and told me I'd, it, that he'd heard I thought I was blacklisted and it wasn't true. A quick call to the editors at DC always proved exactly the opposite. We were told under no uncertain terms never to hire you. Now, Mark Wade also has a reputation within the industry. So whereas Larry Hama was telling somebody literally, I don't want a job, uh, so he didn't get a job. That makes sense. Mark Wade has a reputation of throwing tirades. Uh, apparently, when he was uh, the head of CrossGen, uh, he would just be in the office just throwing absolute fits, uh, just like he does online. So it, his personality in person is very similar to this online, apparently. And so he's a, he's known as a very difficult person to work with and a very difficult person personally. Now, uh, maybe this comes with uh, the fact that he's uh, pretty talented and he was writing pretty well at the time. And so he just doesn't have those traits that make him a good like personable 
horrible person, but that makes it difficult for people to want to work with you again uh, if you cause problems uh, for them at the end of the day. So none of this seems like there's actually any blacklisting going on. These people are just saying stuff as they do. When the real blacklists are out there, the real people who are just because they put on a hat like this, never offered to hire uh, in the industry are very real. And we're talking Chuck Dixon just got just, just destroyed, never was allowed to work for Marvel or DC again. We have uh, Orson Scott Card. He was on Superman, and, and DC canceled it literally because he's a Mormon. I'm, de I'm dead serious because he is an outspoken Mormon about his values. That was it. DC canceled him. That's controversial, after all. So religious discrimination. Orson Scott Card should have sued them in hindsight. We have our, my good friend Ethan Van Skyver, of course, uh, who did nothing wrong. We have Mike S. Miller. We have we the list goes on and on of people who are blacklisted from the industry. They actually put out a list in 2018. I was on it of people who would never get hired again. Uh, and it's really funny to see these pros who, of course, are still working in the industry even now, claiming the blacklists on their front. Uh, but you're not the victims, my friends. You guys are the aggressors, and you're the people who are ruining comics, and we're going to take it back. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button, my friends. Make sure to get on my subscribe star, pick up my books, and support the independent alternatives to these people. That's all we can do to change things for real, and I appreciate you guys for being there.